no matter your age, your plan for retirement can start today. From the News Channel 5 Network, this is the Retirement Report. Good morning. Welcome to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. We're going to be talking about estate planning today. This is one of those areas that is so important. It's like the, uh, the icing on the cake, right? This is where the, the, sometimes it's one of the last things we get to when it comes to our retirement planning uh, and, and even in life, you know, as far as uh, preparing, you know, making sure your family's going to be taken care of, uh, having at least a basic will, for instance, and maybe powers of attorney. Uh, hopefully you have those things, but if not, this is going to be the show where we're going to talk about that and also about the five essential documents that make up the foundation of a good estate plan. So we're gonna go into those documents, what they are. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, them in detail. And helping me with that today is my good friend, special guest, Russ Cook with Russ Cook and Associates over in Brentwood, Tennessee. Uh, Russ is a board certified estate planning attorney. I've been working with Russ now for over 15 years with my clients, his clients, talking about things that uh, when we set up an estate plan, this is one of the areas uh, when I'm working with clients for the first time in setting up their retirement plan, we go through these different processes. You got to have the income piece down. We're looking at your an investment analysis, of course, of the monies that you're going to have in retirement. And then we talk about when we, you know, as we go through all that and the tax planning and all the different areas that we cover, one of the things we, of course, have to deal with is the estate planning. What do you want to have happen with your stuff while you're living? If you become incapacitated, what's the plan for that? Uh, when you, of course, pass, how do you want your, your affairs to be handled then? What do you want, uh, where do you want your assets to go? Uh, and we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of different uh, ways to do that, as well as uh, understanding some of these uh, risks that go in, you know, that life brings our way, that good planning can help us uh, when we got, you know, as far as uh, covering those risks, if you will, or having a plan for those. So, Russ, one of the things there, five essential documents, let's start with that. We'll let you, <laughs> let you jump in, yes. starting with um, the five essential, essential documents. documents. Well, typically when we put together an estate plan for a client that wants to avoid the probate process and transition assets without court involvement, we'll uh, use a revocable trust, which is the first of the five essential documents, together with a pour over will. It's basically a document that says if you have to go through probate, then the will is filed and it passes the assets into the revocable trust. Then there's a power of attorney for financial matters, a power of attorney for health care matters, and a living will. The power of attorney for financial matters allows you to appoint someone to make financial decisions for you in the event you're, of your incapacity or otherwise cannot do it. Power of attorney for health care is appointing someone to make health care decisions in the event that you cannot make those for yourself. And then there's a living will, which is a directive to the hospital stating if your condition is terminal with no hope of recovery that you'd be authorizing them to take you off the machines. And they're all very important for people to have as part of their estate planning package because it addresses issues that happen during life and of course how assets get distributed after you pass away. So this is one of those areas when we're talking about, you know, when I, in, in, in my book, Seven Steps to Financial Freedom and Retirement, in the estate planning, chapter seven, the estate planning, I get into talking about a lot of these different uh, areas, including this five essential documents, and we give you some brief things. We're gonna go into even more detail here. There's another book, uh, in addition to, I'm gonna show you books. <laughs> in addition to Seven Steps to Financial Freedom and Retirement, okay, and this one, right, in Chapter 7, it gets into the five essential documents that make up a good estate plan. The next, in the foundation, and this is just the starting part when we get into that. Now, another good book that I, uh, has been good estate planning is Tony Robbins' book on Unshakable. I talked about his other book on, um, on, uh, I think it's financial freedom. He he, he, he uses my title. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it does quite a, I hope pretty, he called pretty you close. first before he put it together. I know, right? And <laughs> he just wrote more stuff. That's all. Uh, one of the things he asked some great questions though. What if you're no longer able to work due to an unexpected illness or disability? You know, this is one of those areas. If you, um, when we talk about the five essential documents, let's talk about the living piece first. So for instance, uh, periods of incapacity, have a client uh, right now, in fact, who's still in assisted living, had a stroke, 
uh, and God forbid something like this happens to you, do you have a plan in place? Now, of course, as a client, we've, you know, he's, he's been a client for a number of years. We did have a plan in place, or do have a plan in place still. And this allowed him to, uh, in his situation, single person, uh, had his brother as, or has his brother as his power of attorney. And that was, that was so important at this event because with this stroke, he wasn't able, of course, to take care of things for himself. There was a time, all right, when he was in the hospital and, and even initially in uh, rehab, uh, going through rehabilitation and what basically is like a nursing home where there, you know, lots of therapy every day. He wasn't able to communicate well. He, you know, very, hardly at all, in fact. Uh, and so his brother was able to take over his financial affairs, pay his bills, take care of the things that needed to be taken care of uh, for him through that period and be able to work with the doctors and, and his medical care, taking care of his medical care as well uh, through that period of incapacity and still helps him uh, to a great de degree. So Russ, this is one of those areas that you know, we talk about estate planning, we're always thinking, well, what happens, you know, when we pass, of course, we want to have a will and all that. But powers of attorney are so important, and a trust can be a, a key part to that as well if you, if you become incapacitated. Yeah, that's exactly right, because a revocable trust is a document that when you sign it, it's created. And you want to make sure that when you create the revocable trust that you fund it with the assets that you want to have controlled through the trust. And one of the benefits of a revocable trust over a will is if you become incapacitated, there's a successor trustee that can take over and manage those assets for your benefit. A lot of times when you have an account that's in a trust, it's much easier for a trustee to take over and manage those assets than trying to do it through a power of attorney, although a power of attorney in most cases will also allow you to do that. The revocable trust seems to be a, a better fit. Now, if you do have just a will, then you certainly want a power of attorney or a revocable trust. Either way, you still want the power of attorney for financial matters to handle assets that are outside the trust. For example, as, as Hank brought up, there are retirement accounts that you own that cannot be accessed because you own them individually, you're not gonna put them in your trust for tax reasons. So you want someone to be able to manage those assets and draw funds from it if necessary to take care of your needs. So those documents are Im very important for incapacity along with the health care power of attorney and the living will. So this is, a, this is one of the things to consider. What happens if you don't have those documents? Mm -hmm. All right, so thinking in terms of, we'll talk about a couple instances. You may remember uh, Terry Schiavo years ago in the, uh, the of course there was a national news story talking about this lady who you know was in a coma who you know and her family was fussing or her husband and her and her parents as to what should be done uh, and the importance of just have had having had a power of attorney for health care and a living will laying these things out how important that is because mm -hmm. they got expensive. I mean, they yeah. the, the attorneys, the court costs, uh, all because those things weren't done. And she was, and she was younger. I think in her thirties, if I remember right. Uh, so th then this, yet this went on, drug on for years. And I mean, the pain, the the, the anguish, the expense, the time is crazy. All because of this, these these documents. All right. So it's so important for a power of attorney for health care and a living will to have those kind of things in place. Another is is assets. So th when you're going to court, they're trying to get a appointed conservator, and they're fighting as to who should be the conservator, and to what who knew what her actual wishes were. So that gets into uh, the health care, but also with regard to assets. So Russ, this is one of those areas uh, that I used as an example earlier. If you become incapacitated, God forbid you have a stroke, uh, husband and wife even, just because you're married doesn't mean that your spouse has access to your bank, you know, your retirement accounts which are in your name. Yeah, and that's, that could be a, a big problem because a lot of times people, when you're talking about incapacity, there's also that period of time when you really can't manage your finances, but you may not be legally incapacitated. And that's where you want someone to step in and help you with financial assets and make sure that the right decisions are being made while you're holding those assets. And then if you don't have those documents in place, then how is someone going to come in and help you because they don't have the legal power 
to sign checks for you or, or manage your assets or access your retirement accounts. Yeah. And then of course, if you become incapacitated and you don't have these documents, then you're forcing someone to go to court to get appointed conservator, even your spouse, yeah. to make sure that you're making, these decisions are being made for you and you don't want that. This is one of those areas, in fact, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, I'm gonna dive back into that because I want you to understand just how important this is. When we're talking about having to go to court to be appointed conservator of your spouse, we're gonna talk about in more detail what's entailed in that, what the expense of that is, and not just up front, but over time, how expensive it can be. And, and well, well, we'll get into that when we come back from the break. And we'll talk more about, of course, the other documents that are so important for your estate planning. Join us here, we'll be right back on the Retirement Report.